you know, we're, we're, we're pleased. Um, so we always appreciate residents. Yeah. I'm proud to say we did it. And hopefully the seniors feel a little bit more special than they would without them. Welcome to Prime Lunchtime with Brian Johnson, a monthly podcast featuring the city manager and your host, Rico Figliolini. Taking the conversation beyond just talk, it's about getting the facts, discussing the issues, and asking honest questions of our city. Hi, everyone. This is Rico Figliolini, Peach Recorders Life podcast. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's been a while, but this is the Prime Lunchtime with city manager, Brian Johnson. Hey, Brian. Rico. Hey, good to see you. Different background. I love it. <laughs> um, some people are getting back to work. The city's opening up a little bit. Um, we got a lot to talk about. So in this 30 minutes, we're going to be talking a bit about the pedestrian bridge coming online, the class of 2020 video that the city inspired or that is being done to uh, celebrate the high school class of 2020 here in the city of Pitchery Corners, plus a bunch of other things uh, dealing with the 2021 budget, um, the trails, town center, lots of stuff to go packed in 30 minutes. Stay with us. I just want to talk about our leading sponsor that makes all this possible, Peace Recorders Magazine, the podcasts, uh, and that is Hargrave Fiber. Uh, I want to thank them for being a sponsor of these podcasts. Uh, they are a company located in the south here in Georgia, and every community they go into, they are part of that community, being a significant portion of what goes on there. Uh, they do innovative solutions for small businesses as well as large businesses provide enterprise solutions for companies and they especially for companies that are working remotely they actually provide um, free tools to be able to work remotely and collaborate online so check them out hargravefiber.com slash business or hargravefiber.com and i'll get you to where you're going uh, now back to brian brian thanks for uh, being with us here absolutely um, so how has your COVID-19 since the last time we spoke? How has things been going with you and the city, your family in the room? Well, you know, family is no different than yours and others out there. We're, you know, getting getting along. Um, you know, people in different phases of life have different unique things happening at home. Right. Um, you know, um, mine, I've got, you know, elementary and middle schoolers. And so there was that homeschooling component that, Hmm. Mommy and daddy were, you know, having to supervise and that that was unique, but that's done. It's summertime now. Right. And, you know, now it's really trying to transition like a lot of parents are with trying to find things for their kids to do over the summer when there's a shortage of, um, you know, camps. You know, there's not as many camps that are going on. And so no. there are going to be weeks in which there's not anything to do. And, you know, I know parents are struggling with, you know, how to keep the kids out of the house, off the of technology, you know, out doing some things. So you know, we're no different than anybody else. Um, we're getting through it. Um, city, we think is, is doing well. We're, um, you know, w with the exception of like the, the theaters, which are still not authorized to be open. Right. And, you know, so Cine Bistro is not, you know, and, and things like that. Pretty much all the businesses that made it through that shelter in place part are open to some degree. Mm -hmm. But it's taking a toll. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Tuesday morning, the nationally declared uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy yesterday. So that. Yeah. And, uh, and the initial list of stores that they're looking to close, um, and it could change, but initially it looks like the one in Peachtree Corners could be one that closes. Wow. So, you know, we as a city are already getting our team looking at maybe if that is going to be the case to backfill it with something. So we're already reaching out to types of businesses that we think are a good fit for that mm -hmm. location, that store footprint, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, but overall, I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're coming out relatively unscathed, at least right now compared to a lot of other cities. True. Um, the more I've been out there driving around and, and actually shopping, even at like Ingalls and even though I've been doing a lot of online shopping, Instacart is really good. Um, especially right. when you get the little free delivery coupon. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but uh, but businesses are doing things. There's a lot of businesses that are uh, creating new ways of doing certain things. I mean, you got Noble Finn giving away you know 100 pounds of of ro rosemary uh, dough to make your own focaccias or pizzas. Um, you got other companies like um, Taqueria Del Mar, I think, was doing you know pay as you go, pay as you can, pay, yeah, pay, pay what you can. can. Uh, so there's there's a lot of creativity going on. Yep. Um, even in the even in the summer camp uh, world, we um, put out a call to see what summer camps are going to be opening. So the, there will be a list in Peace Recorders magazine about that, about summer camps that are opening with certain restrictions and some of them that are doing like these virtual summer camps, like coding camps and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, it, it is um, challenging and changing. Um, it's well, different some are you know in yeah. peach tree corners because like for instance if you have kids that are at the swimming you know age there's right. not going to be the, you know swim season is not happening this summer no but you the know, pools camps the typical camps are not happening this summer right uh, pools are opening a little bit late you know i know fields yeah. club not opening until june one so you know there was that memorial day right. week which is usually the weekend where most of these pools open and yeah. You know, and even the city, you know, we made a decision uh, out of an abundance of caution to not have any events before July 4th, uh, really before, until the July 10th weekend. July 10th weekend. Right. right. So July 4th, there will not be any city organized events. Mm -hmm. we canceled all of the ones um, that were scheduled prior to that. But July 10th is when we're looking at re-engage reactivating the town green with right. organized city sponsored events i actually think the very first event is going to be I think, let's see, july 10th is a friday that mm -hmm. friday night is going to be as it stands now the um introduction of our night farmers market our night market oh okay and so, um, you know, we, we feel like that's an event that we can kind of start easing in and making sure that it's not, you know, um, in, you know, an un, unmanageable amount of people per right. se. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, at that point, we'll take a look at things and we're looking to still have some, you know, things like concerts and stuff out at the town green this summer. Yeah. And it's big enough, actually, to even if you sort of spread people out a little bit, it's probably big enough to be able to do that. Um, and I know, for example, the Peachtree Corners uh, Festival has been postponed too. That's going to go to the fall, like we discussed yep. earlier. Light Up the Corners has been pushed back to right. August 15th, I yes. believe. Is the yep. August. That's what looking at right now, yeah. And they haven't, that's not even finalized yet. They, right. they have plenty of time to wait and then finalize the same way we have a list of uh, peace recorders events on town center that we're going to print in the magazine but uh, but with the caveat that you know you have to check with the city to make sure this is actually going to yeah. happen uh, because things are changing you know we don't know what's going to happen over the next four to six weeks right and, uh, but it'd be good to have that so we will have some of that info in the in the upcoming issue that'll be the beginning of june that'll be mailed um there are um, there's the bridge that uh, is, that span is actually going up. You said this weekend, right? No, actually, that was it's next weekend. We, next weekend. Our world, okay. yeah. So June fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we're going to close one forty one mm -hmm. underneath the bridge sometime the evening of June fifth, like like ten p.m. type of thing. Okay. You know where there's no rush hour traffic. There's no you know that kind of stuff. We're going to close it that evening that night and keep it closed until like sunday morning at like 3 a.m i think is it's going to be reopened okay the reason and so then the detour would be peachtree corner circle to medlock medlock back to 141 so it's a short detour there okay i see that you know and, and, and the traffic you know, or the you know roundabout um, that we put in there uh you know to use to get up but the now reason, that, that's phase yeah. one right phase so, one yeah. that's phase one at this point that that's correct. And then phase two is June twelfth. That's correct. Okay. That's um, correct. And so the reason and June twelfth will only be one day, I believe. Okay. But the reason that we have to do that is because so the next weekend, 
they've got to set the span in. It's three sections, two sections that attach to the two towers, mm -hmm. and then a middle section. And when you put the sections of steel together, I want to say it's 72 massive bolts mm -hmm. uh, attach the two steel sections together. And then they got to pour the concrete in the span once yeah. it's in. Okay. So that's why next weekend it's the full weekend. And then after that, the span will be in, the concrete will have been poured and everything, but then they've got to go up and we've got to set the rails on the sides and they're actual panels. Okay. So you can't have a, you can't have a, a Georgia DOT requires a fence of at least eight feet. Mm -hmm that doesn't allow you to throw objects off that essentially are bigger than the gap in a chain link fence. Right, right. Well, we didn't want to put a chain link fence because that wouldn't look good. So what sure. we did is we did some research and we kind of used the philosophy behind the screen um, like you would see on a screen door. Mm -hmm. If you get up close to it, you can see all the little squares in it. Right. But then when you get farther back, you can actually see through it. You know, it's not quite as clear if it wasn't there, but you can see through it. Right, right. So what we did is instead of putting chain link or a solid panel, we took um, it's it's some sort of a fabricated like um, thin aluminum sheet, you know, that that's solid. But and then we cut lots of holes in it okay. so up walking the span mm -hmm. the holes are all really close together you can see out right but what it does when you're driving on the road and looking from afar is it actually makes the holes make a pattern that mm -hmm. shows the leaf from the tree on our logo that's cool so and that's what's got to be placed in the span the second weekend, and you have to hang it from the outside so they don't want any cars underneath when they're doing right, it. Right, and it's going to say Peachtree Corners on it. And then there will be letters, channel letters in the middle that will say Peachtree Corners on each side. All right, cool. So that's happening soon. That's happening, you know, June 4th starting off. So we're going to see the surprise. I saw some of the – I saw the spans actually sitting on yeah, the side of the road. Yeah, they're the road right now. Yeah, massive. Um, since we're talking about town center, has um, is the work continuing on the? Do you know on the um, Uncle Jack's? Yes, that's continuing on there, right? Uncle um, Jack's is you know going until they're done. Okay. I want to say I've heard that you know because there's a lot of interior stuff with commercial grade hoods and everything. Right. That August is when they're looking to be done. That sounds almost right because originally I think it was like end of June, beginning of July. But with all this COVID nineteen and everything yep. going on, that just that makes sense. Yeah, that's that's close. The exterior, with the exception of doors and windows and everything, mm -hmm. is starting to get close to where you're like, okay, that's you know most okay. of what you're going to see. But that's still going on. And then we made a bunch of improvements and used this period of time as an opportunity to make some upgrades ourselves without mm -hmm. interfering with things. So for instance, the stage at the town green, right. we had, you know, been, we had heard from the residents and attend events that it wasn't high enough. And so after the first concert, we started having to rent a stage so that mm -hmm. we could elevate it. So what we did is we went ahead and we built a permanent elevated stage out of some really nice stained wood. And um, so now we won't have to rent anything and it's permanently elevated from right over top of the port concrete one that was part of the original. And then actually we made it a little bit bigger. Oh, okay. So the, whoever's performing can be a little bit outside of the covering if they want. Okay. And so it looks great if you haven't seen it. We also stained all of the deck underneath the, you know, covered areas by the restaurants. Uh -huh. We have a second playground structure that has just been installed and is out there. And then cool. the trail that we initially cut 
just solely for the purposes of people walking from the town green through the woods towards Da Vinci Court and mm-hmm. for a circle where they were parking. Yeah. That trail got used a lot by a lot of people who used town green to exercise. So we went and put a bunch of exercise stations in that stretch of trail for people who were doing it. So if you want to do pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups, um, you know, uh, dip bars, we've got monkey right. bars to practice things. We've got a climbing wall for you to have to run up and, and get over it. In other words, it's got a lot of obstacle course type of stuff. Right. For people who want to use it for to either get in shape or maybe to practice some of the things that you see in some of those races like Spartan Race and Tough yeah. Mother and things like that. So if you haven't been out there, and especially if you like to exercise, I would challenge you to go out there and look at some of those. It's a pretty cool little area now. And, um, yeah. you know, we'll, uh, we'll keep going. We'll keep improving it as people tell us some um, things that we can do to improve. Oh, and the last thing yeah. is new lights out there so um you know at night um the sidewalk that rings the town green has Mm -hmm. overhead lighting over it yeah when we do the night market right farmers market at night it'll be lit inside the town green much brighter than it was last year oh okay cool a lot of stuff going on at town center that's more businesses opening i saw hoot wings uh, yep. be open soon if it's not already yeah it's um, not quite but it's like within the next couple of weeks right so there's things going on there um across the way even though tuesday morning may may close uh little market open yep. Lidl has Lidl. filled mm-hmm. um the Earth, former earth fair space so yep. Lidl is in it's open yep and uh, so i you know encourage somebody to go out it's a it's a boutique grocery store it's unique mm-hmm. so it's not you know so i don't want somebody to think like oh well it's the same as all of them no it has its own unique yeah type of thing and so you know i mean grocery mm-hmm. store shopping is a very personal thing as we all know so i leave yeah. it up to the individuals but we're excited that the space got filled yeah it's, uh, there's a lot more even office spaces that are being filled i've noticed i've been getting more releases about commercial space that are filling in like there was summit parkway um some businesses went in there there's a bunch of places that are actually beginning to fill in a little bit um so it's good to see that businesses are coming back lent tech park is out reopened uh so you we're seeing more of that going on yep um we are seeing um uh i don't want to miss like the e-scooter sort of soft opening of that launch where people can go now at Technology Park, pick up an e-scooter if you have an app, and uh, ride around within Technology Park. Maybe go to Andabies, maybe go visit a business, maybe go up to the hotel area, and then leave it there, and it drives back, right? Yep, that's yep. correct. And not just drives back; it can drive to the docking station where it can get disinfected too. Disinfected, right? I saw that. And so you know, it's just I'm glad you brought that up. It's just again another example of what Curiosity Lab is doing. This was the world's first um, unveiling mm-hmm. and offering to the public of a teleoperated e-scooter. Yeah. And so, you know, little old Peachtree Corners was able to get the first teleoperated e-scooter deployment, a hundred scooters that can be moved around, including being summoned like an Uber mm-hmm. from teleoperators that are um, in Mexico City, Mexico. Right. Now, this is free of charge, or is there a charge on no, that? No, you know, you have to download an app. Um, right. It's just like Lime and, you know, okay. all the other scooters. However, for first-time users, I want to th- say they give you a $10 initial credit. Credit, okay. Stick it on there, and then afterwards, it's like, if you're doing it by, you know, by the t- by time versus by, I think you can do it half a day, a full day unlimited, or right. by the minute. I think it's 25 cents a minute right. after you go through the okay. you know, initial. So, again, I, I just challenge somebody to do it, um, even if it's just for, you know, just curiosity's sake, just to sure. come out here and get on it and try it out, look at the technology this may be 
how e-scooters are redeployed, you know, in other cities around the world in the near future. Yeah. Things are changing. It's amazing. Ali, Ali is not running anymore. Not right now. They, at this point. Yeah, they, they've got a 2.0 that they're considering bringing back, but their initial version, they got all the testing that they needed to do here. And so they went and, you know, had it go back. And they, But they have come up with a version 2.0. And, you know, there's talk about bringing it out here and seeing how it works on in the real world also. All right, cool. The... Um, <clears throat> The other part of what you guys are doing, what the city's doing, is because of this, because COVID-19 had lots of people off the road. Everyone knows gas pricing is down to, what, $1.69 a gallon, depending where you go. Uh, people are not driving around as much, although it's, it's, it is beginning to pick up now. I, <clears throat> where it was 30 minutes to go downtown or midtown, now it's taking like 40, 45 minutes. So traffic is starting to build back. Starting to get back to... <laughs> Getting back to normal. <laughs> now, we would talk about new normal. I was hoping it wouldn't be as normal. Right. But um, so, but you guys have been able to take advantage of being able to um, move up the schedule on some things like street resurfacing. So right. uh, our budget is set to get approved at our June meeting because our fiscal year starts July 1. Right. And a couple of highlights might be, um, one, our overall general fund just out of an abundance of caution, we went ahead and cut 11 in um, almost 12% of our budget um, because we just, there were some revenue streams that we just were not confident would come in mm -hmm. uh, just because we don't know enough. We don't know what it's going to do. This, you know, coronavirus, this pandemic is going to do over the course of the next 12 months. So we cut right. our revenue estimates down 12%. Because the, the city operates on a, uh, can't think of it as a cash flow, right? I mean, you can't go in debt necessarily. Right. Cities, counties, and the state right. have to operate on a balanced budget, annual balanced budget. Right. We so we cut our revenue projections by 12%, which means our expenditures have to meet or fall below the revenue. Mm -hmm. so we cut our budget already. Um, you know, our hope is, is it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't come in any worse. And so we've already prepared for it. But there's also some aspects of our budget we took advantage of. You just mentioned gas prices. Well, asphalt is a petroleum based product. Right. It is not only that, but then there are some paving companies that are hungrier right now than maybe they normally would be, mm -hmm. even though. In Metro Atlanta, a lot of the paving companies are tied up in the Georgia 400-285 interchange. There's mm -hmm. a massive amount of concrete, uh, asphalt going in there. But we are taking advantage of some pricing, so we increased our annual allocation to resurfacing from 1.5 to 2 million, and it's currently out to bid for us to okay. do that. So we're going to re be resurfacing a few more streets than we normally would, and of course. The way we do it is we have a condition assessment done on all of the streets in the city, mm -hmm. and we bid it out by listing usually 10 sections of streets that are the 10 worst sections that need it. And then we have a company, you know, the, the winning bidder just starts paving until they run out of the money that we allocated and they work down the list. So sometimes, depending on pricing, you could be, you know, number eight on the list and you get... Mm -hmm done sometimes other years the cost is such that it doesn't get to say number eight or number six or whatever so we'll see but anyway those are you know some of the highlights the only other one of significant note would be we also were able to move up the trail system um add mm -hmm. a section of trail system our 11 mile interconnected trail system mm -hmm. Um, we are moving up the section that connects to the pedestrian bridge on the town center side. Right. And we're going to put all of the trails that are down along or down in the creek. That's between, you know, the black, the old black walnut restaurant and, and right. uh, the, the, the swath of trees over there, that area. Trees. Right. And so we're going to do that um, starting, you know, late this summer. So we're going to, as soon as that pedestrian bridge is open, they're going to mm -hmm. immediately be connecting 
um, constructing and connecting additional trails so you can walk down along it and down in it. That's cool. So, we, you know, obviously the city has been able to take advantage of certain things, um, but other things you had to reinvent sort of. Uh, Cisco WebEx. Are you guys using Cisco WebEx yep. for your conference? Yep. So, so I missed the last city council meeting this past Tuesday. You guys finished earlier than I than I thought. I was trying to log on, but so citizens are going to be able or have been able to actually watch city council sessions. Yep. Um, being able to see the documentation being put up, I think, or them being able to download them, uh, and also to be able to put out questions, even even though it's it may be ahead of the meeting. Um, no, we actually were able to do it to where you could either submit a question in writing right there by tapping in kind of the chat section, right? Could read it out loud so that everybody knew what it was, and then an I or somebody would verbally answer it. Or we offered those who were had logged in, they could just say yes, they want to make a comment. And we could then bring their camera and microphone up. Oh, cool. And actually virtually address council. And so, yes, we were able to do that. I mean, you know, it looks easy. It does take a lot of moving parts to get it oh, you know, done. But yeah. yes, we've, we've had to learn how to do just like everybody else mm -hmm. things we're doing right now virtually because we can't do it in person right now well and the good part is i think it democratizes it better right government that i uh, maybe i can't leave my place maybe i'm wheelchair bound or maybe i just can't leave to be able to make that meeting and sit there for three hours and it gives me the opportunity to watch it well maybe i'm doing some work or streaming something we'll be able to make comments like you said public commentary is actually open to more people probably uh, than it might otherwise not have been. Um, do you think, now lots of cities have been sort of getting there slowly. I know from a reporter I was speaking to recently that Sandy Springs was holding back, did not want to do it, but finally had to do it because of COVID-19 and, and they will probably continue doing it. Um, do you see the city of Peachtree Corners doing that? Like even after we get past this, this bit of stuff that we're going on, do you still think that it will be live streamed, even if you hold the meetings in the chamber? Well, potentially. I mean, the chamber is a different setup. I mean, mm -hmm. so now when it comes to, you know, being able to interact and post things remotely, it's a much bigger room. I mean, because so remember, when we did this, council wasn't even at City Hall. Right. So right. That's right. That's right us that we're in the main conference room here, which is where we do our work sessions, mm -hmm. but it's a smaller room and there were, you know, and council wasn't there. And so we are looking at it, but it's just, it's not current. It's not set up right this second to be able to provide all of the stuff that we did when we have been having these meetings remotely, just because council will be physically at the building and will be, need to be in a much bigger room. Okay. And, Got people sitting. Even then, you're going to potentially have seats blocked off in such a way that you're, you know, space different, and so people will be spaced out even more. And mm -hmm. you know, so it's the logistics behind it are harder, but we are certainly looking to see if we can, you know, continue some aspect of this in some. In some yeah, way. I don't. I, I don't see that it could be as integrated as if doing a Zoom meeting which is what Cisco WebEx is like, right? Um, but certainly streaming live, uh, even if the people can't see the documentation, I mean, they could always download from a link. I mean, you know, just, you can't be perfect. Yeah, no, that's true. Now, again, the difference is, is streaming live versus taping it and making it available. Right. The only thing you gain if, you, if, if it's streamed live is the ability to maybe make a comment in real time on something that's going on. What you lose is the ability to watch it at your convenience. And so that's why oftentimes mm. take it and then if you can turn it around quickly, like 24 hours later, it's up. Then for days or weeks, mm -hmm. somebody can watch the meeting at their convenience versus having to reserve a Tuesday night at 7 p.m., 
oh, I can't do something because council meetings coming on and it's streamed live. That's the only thing, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I get that. There's pros and cons. You know, it's funny the way for, I mean, and it is a larger, it's a chamber, it's a whole different ball game. There's different variables you have to deal with. I know that when we do our podcast and with Facebook live streaming, it's live streamed and then it stays on Facebook the way that we do it the way that I do it with lower with all the graphics on it. I mean, I could become more interactive with the graphics and actually, we could, right. you, know, you know, we could have shown video, we could have shown uh, pictures of town, town center. You know, if I had planned it out and had the, uh, the budget to do that, like a big TV, uh, right. thing, I could be able to show those slides and stuff. Um, but you know, in time things will happen, I guess. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I don't want people to forget also that, uh, especially businesses, every every business knows this, I guess. July 1st is is now the due date for business license fees, uh, which was postponed from April or March, I think. March. March. So it's been a while. So that's part of your cash flow, and that's going to be coming back at some point. You, after, you know, by July 1st, I'll be coming back. Again. And we're still, I don't want to sit here and say that we're on a case-by-case -case basis. There may still be some exceptions if somebody can lay out a case make a case for themselves okay um, you know um so you know in general that's when everybody is due but there are there could be extenuating circumstances where on a case-by-case -case basis we change sure. from that too sure and before we end i just wanted to say that the city has gotten behind this whole big thing class of 2020 um it's it's a sad thing, obviously, to have uh, kids that are gra were supposed to graduate have holiday parties, have graduation parties. None of that is happening, or at least not virtually. I mean, not in real life. I mean, not in real. Right. <laughs> so it's happening virtually. People are doing Zoom parties and in the graduation parade by using you know cars as a parade and and stuff, which is kind of neat, a little different, certainly not the same way that everyone else has been doing it prior to this. But the city's helping uh, producing a video. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So, you know, like you just said, we have all of these Peace Street Corners residents going to a lot of different schools around here. Mm -hmm. but we oftentimes think of, you know, the ones that come to mind immediately, like Norcross High and Wesleyan and, you know, some Duluth High and you know, GAC and, you know, St. Pius. I mean, schools that are kind of within reach. Um, but we got a lot of seniors, high school seniors that live in Peachtree Corners that, like you said, aren't going to have the proverbial graduation. So a longtime resident of Peachtree Corners named Nancy Miner. Right. Thought, you know what? Maybe there's something we could do to make our seniors in Peachtree Corners feel special. So she reached out to Mayor Mason and said, hey, do you think that there's some kind of a video thing that the city could do? And, you know, really didn't necessarily know what it would be, but just said, you know, is there? Mm -hmm. So the mayor, you know, I, I, um, reached out to me and said, hey, do you think we could do something special? And, you know, we talked to the rest of council. They were hugely supportive of it. So I reached out to Titan Pictures. Right. right. And he does some of the content for us. And Jim Stone said, sure, we can do it. And, uh, you know, let's try to create a video that we at least give every graduating senior that wants mm -hmm. an opportunity to show their picture and a little bit of, you know, pertinent information about them. Right. And maybe we make it a little bit more interesting than just doing that by having some video, some photo, some aerials of the city and some other special interest stories. And so we, we sent out, we contacted all the schools that have Peachtree Corners residents going there. And again, some of these schools are out there. Um, I can't even imagine the commute some of these students had to do to, to get there, but yeah. And, um, and you know, said, hey, send us, you know, reach out to the parents that live in Peace Street Corners, tell them we're doing this. And then they would get on our website and they could download a one page form with just some biographical information. Send us a picture. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Judy Putnam, my communications director, then kind of helped 
Jim organized it. They put it together, and Jim put a really good – I mean, Titan Pictures did a really good job of putting this together. We are going to go live with it at 3 o'clock this afternoon, which is, you know, Thursday. Right. And um, we'll also have it playing on the big screen on the town green over the weekend. That's cool. 20 minutes long. So if you don't have a senior, that's a little bit. But it is interesting, though, to watch because it is interspersed. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of great scenery of Peachtree Corners and some pretty cool special interest stories of some of these students that are doing some pretty cool stuff. So I would encourage some people to at least – watch it for a little while or watch part of it because it's pretty cool. And then Rico, you've been part of it too and are going to do your part through your magazine to yeah. recognize them too. So between our video, your, um, you know, magazine, um, I think we've, you know, we've done what we can to try to make these seniors um, feel special. Yeah. Not all of the seniors participated. We didn't get every senior to do no. that. But there was over 140 that responded. So, so yes, yeah. it, that, you know we're we're, we're pleased. Um, so we always appreciate residents, both at like Nancy Minor come up with ideas like yeah. this, and yeah. people like you who support it. And then we got a lot of good people around to help us, and of course, mayor and council being supportive of this kind of stuff is uh, what what happened. So. Yeah. I'm proud to say we did it, and hopefully the seniors feel a little bit more special than they would without them. Yeah, that was a great video. I saw a uh, first draft of it, and I just got the link of, of the one that's coming up at 3. Um, just Jim, Titan Pictures, they did a great job on it. It's a super job. I think people enjoy it. A lot of individual interviews also with some of the kids. Yeah. So it was, it's he pulled it together really well. Loved the music. He did the voiceover too, I believe, on it. Yeah. Which was super. He, he has a great voice for that. Yeah. I kept thinking Disney movie or something for some reason, yeah. like Disneyland or Disney World, like a, a feature like that. But he did a good job. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing the final version. Um, we're at the end of our time. I think we covered quite a bit. You I do too. Right. You're always very good about giving good information and. and putting out um, stuff that the city, the, you know, residents need to know. Um, so I appreciate you doing that, spending that time with me once a month to be able to do this. So Thank anyone you. that wants to find out more, you know, feel free to follow us on Instagram, Peachtree Corners Life. Pick up the magazine. You should be getting it in the mailbox the first or second week, first eight days in June. Uh, every household in the city gets it. So, should be, you should be having about 19,000 homes. And uh, follow us on Facebook. You get these live feeds. Share this with your friends. If you're listening to the podcast, just review it on Apple uh, Podcasts. We've had a bit of reviews there, so good stuff. It helps us bring us up in the search. Um, and, again, prime lunchtime with city manager is always good, Brian. Appreciate hey, thanks, it. Rico. Thanks for giving us a venue to get information out to our citizens. Sure. Stay with me. The rest of you guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy. You've been listening to Prime Lunchtime with Brian Johnson, the city manager of Peach Tree Corners, Georgia, with your host, Rico Figlioni. This show is part of a family of podcasts produced by Peach Tree Corners Magazine and Mighty Rockets. To find more episodes of this show or our other podcasts, visit livinginpeachtreecorners.com or follow us on Facebook at Peach Tree Corners Life.